I just watched Darkwing Duck. This was the one I was told to watch the most. And when internet commenters tell you you should watch something, you do it or they bring out their death rays. I have avoided your wrath, internet. But I'm really glad I checked this out because it is a fun show. It's a Darkwing is an egotist superhero. This The first episode is a two-parter explaining how the team became one. Darkwing, Launchpad McQuack, and Goslin as a dramatic team slash family. And this takes full advantage of the fact that it's animation because it feels like a classic Disney or Warner Brothers short with the slapstick, with the style, and with the fact that it's very 1940s inspired. You get the bad guys talking like gangsters with the voice. You see, a karate aim. That kind of voice. And you get the very specific shading style. It's, well, this I'm sure was hand done or before computers were really good. Cause the colors are muted. It's cartoons nowadays are extremely bright and colorful and use these eye popping visuals have much more use of lighting and shading. But this, well, it's still excellent. Darkwing Duck is very excellent. And it feels like it belongs with classic Disney animation, even though it came out in the early 90s. It's probably in development in the 80s. <laughs> and you, which is common. It's funny how in the 80s you get a lot of 40s nostalgia. I believe that, the, that people who grew up in the 1940s were creating and running shows in the 80s and 90s. So it's, it's interesting. It is very interesting. I get... The slapstick feels very forward. The slapstick is very similar to Roger Rabbit. So it's, that's really interesting. I like the very specific style. It's, you can, it's a genre of animation. And you know, you could absolutely update this the way they did with DuckTales. Because Darkwing is a wannabe superhero with an ego. That could very easily be done in today's setting. You could see him taking selfies with his... Uh, with the bad guys, <laughs> trying to get more likes and followers, learning new kinds of media, uh, starting a vlog. You could have, I don't know how you'd update Goslin, but you can do it. I feel like alongside with DuckTales, you could absolutely update Darkwing Duck, especially because it's got such a huge fan base. I missed out on it. It came out before I was born. Not that much, but I, I missed it. I knew, I'm sure they, I think they ran reruns, but I I wasn't watching it growing up. This was my first time actually sitting down watching an episode, and I'm really glad I did. Interestingly enough, another trope that I realized I do still see all the time, the bad guy being a Russian or a German. I think part of it's because of the harsh language. I think part of it's also because you can get away with white foreign villains. Because I don't think Russians and Germans are being persecuted in the US, but we do still love to bring up World War II and the Cold War. I, think I see more World War II stuff. That's a genre. Cold War, not as much. But interesting enough, oh, yeah, in the design-wise, uh, the bad guy, <laughs> all I could think of when I saw him was Radigan, because the, the, he's got the big chest and clearly skipped leg day. I thought of Radigan from The Great Mouse Detective with it, with his confidence and his presence. <laughs> Kept wanting to go, and wanting him to go up to Darkwing King. Oh, Darkwing, I like your disguise. <laughs> Rips off his mask or something. And it, it's genuinely very sweet too. Disney, of course, is a family network and they do have this very atypical family with Darkwing, Goslin, and Launchpad. And it is genuinely very, very sweet. Uh, Goslin's, of course, an orphan as many protagonists are. That goes back to fairy tales. Disney didn't start that. Interestingly enough, you would, I don't think you'd see an orphanage as orphanage nowadays. I think orphanages were, am I I'm not saying that right? Orphanage is, I think they were shut down during the Reagan era and now the system is known as foster care, riddled with problems, but I believe because that's something I don't think I would have seen nowadays if I were updating it. But it is interesting to see how that was very common, at least in older stories. I like seeing the older technology. I like the breakfast machine. 
<laughs> that was fun. I like how that's used to defeat the bad guys. I like the comedy. I like all the creative w tricks and turns they take. I like the fact that they, oh, there's a, obviously a scene that takes place on a train. I like trains. I like train robberies. I think that goes back to Agatha Christie. And Walt Disney also liked trains, so I'm sure he would have very much approved of that. <laughs> Darkwing is, of course, falsely accused of robbing said train, even though he's just trying to get his glory catching bad guys. Oh, you know what else? What other tropes I see? Okay, this is... Uh, in this two-parter, the bad guys are... They have a device to... They're going to rob banks. I've noticed... How many times have you seen either bank robbers or jewel thieves as bad guys? Especially in older stories from the 20th century. At least in the superhero genre. <laughs> Something I remember seeing a lot. And I find that interesting to see it done here. But of course, it's... You gotta fund your evil plans somehow. Money and jewelry are very good, are very good ways to fund that, although, and I'm sure you couldn't talk about drugs on TV. Don't think you, you still can't in kids' shows. <laughs> yeah, wouldn't that be interesting? The bad guys are running a drug trade to fund their evil plans, or maybe that is, are their evil plans? Seriously doubt you could get away with that in a kids' show. I feel like maybe it'd be chocolate or candy if you were doing the kids' version of that. Oh. Dude, the Darkwing himself is a lot of fun to watch. I like all his his sayings, his heroic sayings. I am the terror that flaps in the night. I am I am the interruption of your conversation. Something along those lines. There's a million of those, and I think I wouldn't be surprised if half of them were improvised, because I know Jim Cummings, who voiced him, was allowed to improvise. Oh, plenty of voice actors I re I recognized. I recognize Christine Cavanaugh as Goslin because I know her as Chucky Finster. I grew up with Rugrats. I can't, I can't unhear Chucky in that voice. It is a distinct, different voice, but I still hear the similarities. I also hear Eddie Deason's Mandark voice. He's one of the flunkies. So all I hear is Mandark. Even though I know it's a different character, there's different inflections. Uh, you're the same voice actors over and over again. I think it's great. It's fun to recognize them. That's always a fun Easter egg. I like the creative, I like the backgrounds in this. The backgrounds are so pretty. I like the way the city looks. I like the way they did the lights. It's gorgeous. I wonder, if they were to update it, would it be in a more DuckTales comic book style or would it be more like Batman the Animated Series or any of the modern Batman cartoons? Where would they go the Teen Titans Go route? I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> let's say it's going more, let's say it does a Batman thing. Let's pretend it's going to do that. If, if it does, who knows? But reboots are, <laughs> reboots are everywhere. I wouldn't, seriously, considering this has such a big fan base, I would not be surprised if, if they, if they decided to reboot it, if that was even in development right now. I have no idea. But it's a fun show. I feel like this is one of the shows because continuity really wasn't a thing earlier on with cartoons in the 90s, even so much in the early 2000s. But I feel like this is one of the shows where you can just watch an episode out of order and still get it, still pick it up really quickly. I wonder what the best episodes are. I could probably find some lists on that. Well, thank you for the recommendations. I'll go through all the other duck shows as much as I can. Thanks, Internet.